my name is Zena Bondati. I'm uh, an editor at NTV. I've been with NTV since 2012, I think. Since 2012, I started off as a media lab a trainee. Uh, then I joined the business desk after that. I rose to become business editor. And now I am science and technology editor at NTV. And I also run a weekly program on NTV called Food Friday, which talks about everything food. I was born in Kakamega County in uh, now it's Kakamega I think County Hospital but at the time I was born back in 87 it was called Kakamega District Hospital and something people don't know actually is that um, the day I was born I was born prematurely I was born seven months uh, at seven months and my mother's midwife was Dr. Boni <laughs> yeah so my parents lived in, uh, I'm from Butere, which is in Kakamega County. My parents lived in Butere at the time, but when I was three months old, my dad says we moved to Nairobi. And I've lived in Nairobi ever since, but uh, even school has been all over the place. I was born in a family of two. I'm the eldest. Um, just me and my brother. I'm a journalist. My brother is a lawyer. Both my brother and I were born Muslims. My dad wasn't. My family is kind of split down the middle. Mm. Catholic, Muslim. My grandmother was a Catholic. Um, my dad converted to Islam when he was, I think, four. No, when he was uh, around in class four. Around class four there. Because he used to live with an aunt, his mother's sister, mm. who had married a Muslim. And then she converted to Islam. That's why I'm named Zainab, by the way. She was named Zainab. So they named me after her. And uh, so my dad became the first of his brothers to convert to Islam. And mm -hmm. since then, a few members of the family have joined in. The other part of the family remained Catholic. My, grand my grandfather remained, a my grandmother remained a Catholic. My grandpa, I have no idea what he was. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody in the family ever knew him. He was <laughs> always moving here, there, there, there. Mm. Mm. But I kind of like that you grew up in that kind of setting where you have both Islam and Christianity existing within the same family because then you'll get to learn a lot about both religions so you decide for yourself which side do you want to go were my parents strict? no I wouldn't say they were strict the way my father raised us is he would reason with us he tells you what he would put together uh, he would put in front of you a number of options and tell you the consequences of each of the options. So when you pick whatever choice you want to, he would encourage us to make our own choices. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he was, I think he would make the choice for us, but make it look like we are the ones who made it. <laughs> but he always would try to reason with us. We were never hit, he never hit us. But ukikosa, mutakalchini, muonge, muone, why, why what you did was wrong, and uh, what you should have done instead and how to do better the next time. My parents split up when I was young and um, my brother and I kind of had to look after each other and my dad was a single father for most of his life, for actually a significant part of his life. And uh, so by the time I was six years old, my dad likes to say that he kind of missed something in my childhood because at six is when I learned to cook. And the first thing I learned to cook was uh, ugali on firewood in Butere, in my grandmother's kitchen. <laughs> in my grandmother's kitchen. And since that time when I learned to cook, I kind of stopped being a child. Mm -hmm. And I started to spend more time in the kitchen and cooking more and uh, doing household things. So you'd rarely ever find me outside playing. The worst thing I've ever done as a child, we lived in Comarok at the time. And my dad, used to he had a charani and uh, my brother and i were playing on it and he put his finger under the needle and dared me to shona his finger <laughs> he put his index finger like this under the needle and i took the dare i said okay and i ran the needle through his finger <laughs> oh yeah my brother screamed <laughs> He screamed a lot. My dad was upset, but hey, we were children, he dared me. I used to want to be a doctor. 
I used to watch a lot of ER and I found, oh my god, those guys have a, such a, must be nice saving lives, oh my goodness, I would want to do that. But the older I got, the more I realized, uh, the sight of blood, nah. <laughs> Also, I got to learn how long they stay in med school. I don't think I have that kind of patience. <laughs> I don't think I have that kind of patience. The thing that changed my mind was um, when I was 15 years old, I think I was in Form 1 or Form 2 in high school. My dad, we lived in Gong at the time, my dad uh, took me to hang out with uh, Jamila Mohammed. She used to work at Ikra in the radio, uh, in, in Ikra is a radio station, and it used to be in Westlands at the time. So hanging out with her that day, my dad left me there with her in the morning and came back for me at the end of the day, like at around 5, 6 p.m. When I hung out with her and got her to see, in her, to see her in her element and being all the journalists, I went home and told my dad, I think I want to be a journalist instead. I still admire Jamila a lot because when I met her when I was 15, I got to meet her again in the NTV newsroom. And... Um, we become such she reminded me of that day i met her uh hanging out with her in the studio she told me i asked her too many questions at some point she got irritated with me but <laughs> i don't remember that bit of the day but uh, she was quite pleasant i liked her a lot and uh, i think meeting her that day is why i'm here today and i always 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 still admire her i was lucky to never actually turn up for a job because when I finished um, USIU I went for internship at Citizen and applied for the media lab at the time I stayed at Citizen for a couple of months I think it was three months three or four months like this and after a few days after that internship I got the call for the lab to come for the interviews and all and I was lucky to get in and so basically Nation is my one and only employer my entire life in my journalism career I have won a few awards but the award that I hold the most dear to me the most dear was in 2017 one day I was in the elevator I was alone I was going down and my phone buzzed so I looked at my phone and there was an email there from uh, FAO the Food and Agriculture Organization in Rome and the email said we are pleased to let you know that you are this year's winner of the A.H. Borma Award. And, oh God, I was so excited. I don't think I've ever had a best date, but I have had a worst date. Tell me about it. <sighs> I don't know why this son of man decided it was a very good idea to talk about my vagina. <laughs> yeah. But I decided, well, I'm Zena Bondati. People know me. I have a reputation to protect. People don't know how to separate the person from the person they see on TV. So anything I do will be linked to my employer. So I just breathed and just sat and smiled. Waited him out. I'd arrived early to that date. Um, I was hungry. It was around 5 o'clock. I was hungry. So I arrived early so that I could eat. I ordered food. He showed up when I was halfway through my meal and he had a uh, juice, I remember it was juice. And uh, after, this, after talking about my vagina, it was time to go and the bill came to 2,300 and something. Son of man said he was going to pay. Looked into his wallet, realized he didn't have enough money or maybe he decided, nah, I'm not going to pay. And he decided that we should split that bill. So in my head I'm like, Two thousand shillings, a date you asked for. You know, when I was in high school, we were taken through this program called a princess program, uh, where it teaches you etiquette, mm. and etiquette dictates that whoever issues the invitation, yeah. whoever issues the invitation, whoever issues that you know Kenyans don't know this by the way, whoever issues the invitation pays the bill. If I it doesn't matter kama mimi mwanamke ama ni nani bora ni mimi nimekwambia kuja you issue the invitation you pay the bill so he said that we should split it was a good idea for us to split the bill so that ni zoe ku split bills na yeye 
So in my head, I'm like, oh, you've already decided we're going to be doing this. Like, I'm going to see you again after talking about my vagina the entire time. <laughs> you've already decided. <laughs> so I paid the entire bill myself. Yote, we did for yote. And um, that was the last time you saw me. Ooh, the most courageous thing I've ever done. Yeah. Hmm. I changed that tampon in front of a man and he had absolutely no idea what I was doing. So, we were stuck in traffic on Mombasa Road. It didn't look like it was going to, to open up anytime soon. And, well, periods don't stop for traffic. Thank God that day I was not wearing a pad. I was wearing a tampon because how would I have changed the pad? <laughs> how? So this man is sitting next to me here. And I can feel tampon I can feel if I were to sneeze, it will drop. What do I do? I looked around the bus to see if there's an empty chair I could go and hide. There wasn't any. I was wearing a big black skirt that day. So I just, and he's sitting here. There's no polite way in which I can tell him to go away without him asking questions or feeling bad. So I just took the tampon, wrapped it, put my legs up on the chair like this, spread that skirt properly around me. And you know how periods make you very paranoid. You can smell blood mm. all the time, mm. like you're a hound. Mm. Then I changed the tampon, took the used one, wrapped it in tissues properly, properly. He had, so I knew the only way to do that without him being suspicious was to engage him in conversation. So that his eyes are here. So that he's not focusing on what my hands are doing. His eyes are here. Engaged him in conversation. And then Uzuri Ulikosiku. And I'm dark skinned, so we only can use that. <laughs> and I'm wearing black. <laughs> and I'm wearing black. I changed. So I kept asking myself, can you smell the blood? Can you smell the blood? He didn't react, so I And to date, he doesn't know. <laughs> He's my friend, I by the way. You. We are friends. <laughs> we are friends. He has no idea that I changed the tampon in his presence. My celebrity crush when I was growing up was uh, Red Sun. Wow. I used to, and then I met no, I didn't really meet him. I um okay, my dad dad if you if you reach this part of the interview, please turn it off, okay? <laughs> turn it off, okay? So um, I lived in an old girls hostel. We went clubbing once. Dad you did not hear that, okay? I've never been clubbing in my life. In my whole life. I've never been clubbing. But we went to Red Tail. And or maybe one of the clubs in Westlands, and Red Sun was at the next table. Oh, I was like, oh my God, Red Sun is here! Oh, Red Sun is here! <laughs> yeah. But I have since gotten over that, and now my new celebrity crush is Michael Bublé. He sings so wonderfully, and the lyrics in his music. Oh. Yeah, I'm fine. The beauty of being a journalist is that you get to travel a lot. You get to see a lot. And you get to learn a lot about, actually appreciate a lot where you're from. And in all of my travels and whatnot, there's really no place more beautiful than the African savannah. Especially the sunrise and the sunset in the African savannah, be it Masai Mara or any other savannah you choose. Oh my God, it is spectacular. And if you haven't been to the savannah yet, you should go. When I'm having a bad day, I have a few things, depending on what kind of bad day it is. Um, or also where I am. Usually, I eat blueberry ice cream. It, back then, it was called Nakmat Blue Label, blueberry swirl. So now it's just Dairyland. I would, I would eat the Dairyland blueberry swirl ice cream. So people very close to me have learned that if you find it in the freezer, that's not a problem. It's a problem when you find it on the table. When it's on the table, yeah, I am having a not so good day. That's if I'm at home. If I'm at work, I will take a very long walk, very long, go all the way to River Road, bus station, Nizunguke, Nitoke Ukuchini, Nirundi Kofisi. 
and there's also space under my desk where I can fit. I'm so small by the way. <laughs> Forget what you see on TV. <laughs> Forget what you see on TV. TV makes people look a lot bigger than they actually are. I'm small in person. So I can fit under my desk very well. So I would crawl under my desk and sleep. Um, sometimes I will also take a walk in Karura Forest. I find that very, when you breathe in that air, especially when it's rained, oh God, it's amazing. It calms you down and all the stress you had, it all goes away. Yes. In five years, I want to have started, um, I recently started like a small scale bread business. Very, very, very small scale. It's still very small scale. Um, in five years, I, I would like to scale it. My brother hopes that I'd have done so by now, but it's only been a few months since I started. I think it's not yet time. So this small scale that I'm doing is just kind of market research to see how people respond to it. Do they like? I have two secret ingredients in my bread mm -hmm. that make my bread very delicious so far the mark uh, the few people who are supporting it love it so in five years well five years <laughs> i hope to have grown it into something that even my parents will be proud of